but I've, I've never really hoaxed. Or originally, my interest was in finding out who was making circles. I, I decided that it was most probably people. So, in the process of finding out who it was, it involved hanging around in a lot of wheat fields, and, and it, it, uh, it seemed sensible at the time to try it oneself. <clears throat> so I and, and others did. Um, once, once that stage had been gotten over, it became quite compulsive. It, uh, it became more, more to do with the uh, cre creative compulsion. Well, they require trouble. They, the, the, uh, the, 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 the size and designs you, you choose to make require trouble. They, they take a lot of effort, and that's the effort that needs to be put into it. Um, I, in, a, in a very arbitrary, set, very arbitrary way, I, I tend to regard the, the, the products of people who don't go to the same trouble as, as hoaxes. I tend to be dismissive of, of, of that work. But um, the people who do go to that effort and, and, and take that trouble, um, to me, they're, they're, they're the, the product they come up with is, is a genuine uh, product. In the same way as a painting would be. If, you, if somebody had gone to a lot of trouble creating a painting, um, there would be no question of its authenticity. You would, you would have some sort of respect for it. And as the language we're using is genuine or fake or hoax, then to me that's that's genuine and there's no question of it. It's it's uh, to, uh, the a, a better answer would be well conscientiousness. That's why we go to all that trouble because it it requires trouble because it inspires people. It it it. Because it's the nature of creativity, it, it re requires to be done. In the same way as anybody, um, anybody creating anything, it, it's required to be done. And, and some people are prepared to do it, and some people perhaps aren't. Well, ask me again, I insist. Oh, okay. Why do you go to so much trouble? Because it's required to be done! <laughs> Of course. <laughs> I think the world would be a better place if the circle makers made a bit of dosh too. But but there again, they do, and and you know, it doesn't. No, it doesn't anger me at all. Well, the thing is, there's no joke being played. It's it's uh, as far as we're concerned, we're creating new new aspects of the same thing. Yes, in, in the same way as you. you I mean, somebody. Somebody said once that, that an artist paints the same painting over and over again, writes the same book over and over again, and sure, you're, you're making circles over and over again, but you're not really making the same designs. You know, it, just, it just needs to be done every year. Why? Well, um, well, I guess it doesn't really. But 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 some might think it does, because it's it's good that it does. It's it's uh, it's beneficial that it does. To to admirers of the landscape. Ask me why the sky is blue, Grant. Why is the sky blue, Robert? I have no idea. <laughs> Because it's required, it's required that it's blue. But, but am I perpetuating a myth? Yes, but it's not my myth. It's other people's myth. So, so to me, I'm perpetuating something else. You know, I mean, you, you might ask, if, is, is it important that there's a mystery? That would be a very interesting question to ask. And um, yes, it is, it is important. Because, because of the, the values and the meanings people place on these things, they decide that it's rubbish if it's man-made and it's brilliant if it's genuine. So mystery does play an, a, a fairly crucial element in how it's valued. I, I would hate to live in a world where there was no mystery.
I, 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 would, I would suggest that um, there was some somewhere if someone said there wasn't. Uh, phantom hitchhiking. You know, people who are seen on the side of roads and, and get later reported as phantom MIB visitations. I mean, I, you know, I, I've been described as that, you know, purely from existing somewhere, you know. How you're seen. I've been sitting at home watching telly in London and have been seen in Wiltshire as this somehow paranormal phenomenon. Um, so, so there is this tendency of people to contribute to ex other people's expectations, which, which is a side of the paranormal which needs to be looked at, I think. Do I, do I write and have credits for my writing? Yes, of course. And, and do I insist upon a credit for my photographs? Of course. But do I crave publicity? No, I, I don't think so. <laughs> I, um, I, I, I would say no. I, I, circle makers tend to shy away from publicity. Being a retired circle maker, I feel immune from any such questions. I mean, I, I have no control over whether people pull the wool over their eyes or not. I, I, I certainly wouldn't. Do you enjoy seeing them do it? I don't, I don't relate to the question, really. Do you enjoy seeing them do it? I'm, I'm, I'm used to seeing them do it. Um, no, I, I don't enjoy it. I, I find it kind of boring a lot of the time. I don't really... I can't say that I enjoy it. I mean, we, we, we live in a world where, you know, internet access and everything, and uh, I, I, I'm on the internet and I read about this and that and not, sometimes it involves me and and I, I don't go away thinking oh I've enjoyed that I kind of th think the word sheesh a lot an internet term thinking god you know so no I don't enjoy it I, I tend to sort of get quite disgusted by it a lot because it's not the phenomenon isn't owned by anybody so I can't control what other people what what meanings and values other people place on it so 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 just because people say that it's made by aliens it's not my fault they think it's made by aliens you know so I, I'm not controlling it I'm all, all I'm doing is giving people the opportunity to think I, I guess think what they like you know I, I, was the risk of being prosecuted and being caught for trespass worth it? Um, well, it wasn't. It was never really a risk, to be frank. I mean, there was never really a risk of being caught. I mean, uh, there, there were a lot of threats made, but but there was never any risk. I mean, obviously, if it, uh, you played percentages, you didn't you didn't put yourself in a risk situation. <laughs> If you saw somebody walking into a field, you'd, you'd make off the other way. I mean, there was no risk about it. You can't, you can't keep pressing home the same point. I mean, that lasts maybe a month or two months. And then you realize that people aren't going to actually... That, that the key to all this is, is that people aren't actually looking for answers. They're not interested in answers. And once you realize that, that they're interested in, in a sort of a social habit, you know, if there was an answer, then they wouldn't be able to come to... They, they, there would be no reason to come to the barge every year, you know. So, so and once you've got the gist of that, then, then it becomes something else. And, and you wallow around for a little while, and then it becomes art. You think, ah, Charles Sarch is into this stuff. Yes, that's, that's a good way of looking at it. It's art. And I, I, I wholeheartedly believe now that it is. Art. It fits the complete criteria of of art, in the sense that art is is supposed to fill people with experience, and people are supposed to get an experience of what they're they're observing or looking at or or being in, and um, yes, it, it fits that criteria perfectly. So yes, uh, one becomes an artist, and it's brilliant.
I have absolutely no right. Or, or I'll give you another answer. I have every right in the world. I haven't decided which one yet. Um, besides the threatening mail, the physical threats, the abuse, um, no. Uh, not, no, no, not much trouble. The, the, the damage to cars, um, the, the hassle, you know. They always seem to phone up when I'm watching a good football match. Apart from that, no trouble at all. The, the, the most common, which I've also experienced, uh, are br bright flashes of light um, in, the, in the direct vicinity of um, your activities. Um, the other ones have been mental, more mental. I've thought, I, I've made a circle, and I, I've made an avenue, and then I've, I'm down at the bottom of the avenue, and and I'll, as I'm making my way up, back up the avenue, I'll think, what if there's a devil sitting in the circle, you know? And I'll start doing my head in a little bit, and I'll get there and there isn't one, so, so I'll realise, well, maybe that's why people see devils, you know? Oh, ooh, ooh, that's something interesting to think about. But, but apart from that, no, occasional meteorolog me me meteorological anomalies, I would say. Bright flashes are a, are a bit of a mystery. And they're, they're talked about amongst circle makers in pubs over beer. To make a circle? Yeah, I'm just like Joe. A couple of people, large pictogram, 400 footer, one and a half hours. And do you feel you can do this in complete darkness with no moon? Um, full moon makes it very, very difficult. You'd call something off. Well, yeah, it's too bright. So, so, yeah, people would see so you. So a half moon is, or a quarter moon is better. Yeah, but or no moon, no yeah. Moon. Sure, okay. yeah, because pe eyes adjust to the light. Everyone everyone who lives in the country knows this. Right. So, so a lot of people say, oh, they couldn't possibly do this in the five hours of darkness. And Well, a lot of people say a lot of things, but they, you know, I mean, the object of this exercise with me initially was to try it. And, and once I'd tried it, you found that a lot of the... Uh, these statements were not true. And then, how do you how do you get a group of people that can can follow orders and, and do these things with such precision without any mistakes? Well, two people. Two people only. following orders. Okay. So you don't you wouldn't get a whole group of people. It'd be too hard to control. Well, you, I mean, you, I would say lately in the last year or so, you've had more than two people working on, you know. and. I would say often it goes wrong. Um, Something happens. Yeah, I mean, there, there was a, a, a very large formation in this vicinity last year. Very large. Probably the largest one you can think of, which went wrong. And if you look at it from a purely aesthetic point of view, it didn't go wrong. If you look at the photograph, if you look at it from the position of being there, you can see how it kind of did go wrong. Um, most of these jobs are done by two in the morning and people are at memory service station by three. There's a obvious uh, sense of denial somewhere. And um, I get accused of, of having a strong sense of denial. And that's, that, that, that explains skepticism. That skepticism is denial because these things are true. And from my point of view, the denial is on the other side. I mean, evidence has been put forward, blah, 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 of uh, this, that, and the other. And, and still, seven years later, you get people saying, well, people couldn't do this because... And to me, that's a sense of denial. Um, to me, it's all about... It's this weird, twisted, kind of wrangled thing about human potential. Yeah. How, how I say, yes, people can do this. People can go out and they can create this thing. And, and, it, and there's a bit, okay, there's a bit, they, they go off in, in secret and it's dark and there's a big mystery about it. And that is, to me, is human potential. But the, there's this other side which says, that's denial, saying that. Human potential is about communicating with these things and, and believing in this kind of invisible world. 
that that no one can kind of quite put their finger on. And and there's the there's the line. You know who's right. I think there's, there's, it's very interesting, the, the, the line. I like looking at the line. You like walking it? Um, well, I, I, I come here and apparently I do walk it. But to me, I'm just coming in for a drink and here I am. You know. <laughs> do you feel like being part of the phenomenon has actually helped perpetrate it? Yeah. Yeah. yeah, I kept it going for a few years. Right. It's a bit, during a sticky period. But I mean, you, you... ninety-one um, between ninety-one and ninety-four, we kind of myself and a few others kept it going when it was Just like it on uh, there was a feeling during ninety-two, ninety-three that the thing needed to be kept going after the uh, debacle of Doug and Dave, and that it was a good phenomenon and it, and it needed. It needed to be continued, and, and there was that a bit of that feeling. And looking back, I think that, that that's probably true. So you do feel like some parts of it are genuine, like they come from somewhere we can't explain. I think that if if you assume for a moment that they're that they're all how, doesn't matter how they get there, if they're all say they're all man-made, all of them. Um, the fact that people are experiencing things and being healed and feeling good, that, that to me is very, very interesting mm -hmm. and needs, needs investigation. Science doesn't look at that. So even at its basis level, if you, if, you strip the form, if you strip the phenomenon down to nothing, you know, to complete non-ness, you know, no kind of paranormal reasons that things are appearing. The fact that people are interacting with them in the way that they do is, I think, very interesting and very important. And and there's a lot to be learned. And I, I would say that that, that that, as it stands, is, um, you know, sufficiently paranormal. So, I mean, you can you can kind of have me or not have me, you know, my, my you know, in it. And it's still paranormal. I think that's quite interesting. The effect people don't people have got completely the wrong idea of art. I think they think it's some they, they view it in terms of objects, but it should be viewed in terms of experience. If you look at a painting, it's not the painting that's got any value. It's the experience you get from it, which is which is the art. It's the, it's the value and the meaning. I think Sotheby's would. would... Oh, they die because they, they have this <laughs> full, completely false way of placing value on stuff, yeah. and it, it's all coming out, isn't it? About what's fake, you know, why, you know it's it's ridiculous. It, art is about the experience you get from something, so therefore, art could be anything in theory, um, anything that you get an experience from, and and there's nothing greater than a massive crop formation that that at, even as a bonus. Um, has a has a kind of a s symbolism attached to it. You know, it's in the shape of something. But even just a, a simple circle, you know, larger the better, as much as you can manage in a night, um, is going to create, it's going to be like this temporary sacred site. And you're going to get more bars than you will from visiting Canterbury Cathedral. Because at least you kind of understand that people built that. But the, the mystery is kind of important. You know, but yeah, there's, there's, I mean, I'm not a complete kind of philistine when it comes to understanding crop so. well, A lot of people say you are a negative person, but if you're making something that turns out to be positive, how is that? Yeah, I agree. I mean, a lot of people say that because they, they it suits them to say that. They, they, a lot of people will say what, what, what suits them. Oh, nice one, birdie. You know, and because I, I, I am, I am, I embody a threat to them because they're trying to place their own meaning and their own value on something and they're all trying to be important you know you'll notice a lot of people in this industry a lot of the people in this pub are all trying to be it's all about how important they are you know 
but and not. disproving each other. Yeah, sometimes. and disproving, arguing mostly sort of rubbish. Yeah. You know, I mean, I still don't get a sense of it. Well, you're asking, you're asking sort, sort of leading questions. I mean, there is. Really, I don't. Well, you are. Well, 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 I'm just interested. I don't need to be one way or the other. Well, I'm interested in questions because because the way you ask them means something. And, and when you true. when you say to me. Why is it that you felt the need? I mean, you're assuming that I did feel the need. I and, am and, assuming that you did feel the Well, that's not true. Why is that I didn't, I didn't... If well, that was not true, why... why how well, it's not true because I didn't feel it. A fair... Well, let me... You have what a, motivated you? You have a fairly... Um, what, a fairly interesting public, question. Yeah, a fairly public voice yes, in but, the media but, but, talking about this. But my, my publicness isn't down to me. It's down to what other people have imposed upon me. I don't think that's true because I don't have any articles in the Observer. I don't have any articles in 14 Times. I don't have any articles in the UFO Reality. I don't have any articles anywhere. Well, yeah, I, I, am a I have an article thing, in one of opinions. those publications. Why is, it, why is it that your opinions are... Why do you feel the need to publish those opinions? Well, it's not up to me whether they're published or not. I know, but you write because them and send them. Why do you line up your papers? Well, I, I, I don't write and send anything. People ask me to write things. They do? Yes. Beef steak chicken. Okay. Fair enough. <laughs> okay, Rob. I mean, I mean, somebody, somebody's just asked me to write the potted history of crop circles, blah Why blah did blah, ask you? for um, the for for a well-known newsstand magazine now. And you ask me why they asked me. I don't know. Why do they ask me? The best story, let me think. Well, there was a great one about, I don't know, the, the, the shootout at the OK Wagon and Horses. I mean, that was when there was all this sort of photography of other people. Going. I, think, I think the best one was when the police came round to my house demanding to know information about circle making. And, and, and Jim and I were about to publish a story in the independent magazine about circle makers and we kind of felt that we knew who was, this was years and years ago, we felt that we, we knew who was kind of doing these jobs um, and uh, that let slip and the police came round and uh, I had to explain to the police that it was really a, it really needed to be sorted out journalistically rather than legally, you know, it was a, not, not, not a police problem, it was a, it was a journalistic it, it, re it required some understanding of how some young people were desperately trying to communicate with aliens. And that, that there was not really anything, not really any kind of rule of law about that, and there was nothing that they should be troubled with. You know, that, was a, that was a good one. And I phoned up Pusey Police Station and they said, I don't want to get into a philosophical argument about this, Mr. Irving. So that was that. My um, first experience of, you know, going into crop circles was purely around the time the BBC were filming in Westby on the Westby White Horse doing a study on some of the crop circles and it just so happened that night that I was leaving my house to go into the back garden and hang some washing up and as I did I saw what I can only explain is triangular craft in the sky with three lights on each tip and sort of more sort of deep red light in the middle and I was quite shocked and startled by this and ran back in to grab my mum for her to have a witness of it and my mum came out but she didn't catch it it was too late for her to see and I found myself sort of lying to my mum and saying I need to fill up my car with fuel for work tomorrow knowing that the only 24 hour garage was about sort of eight nine miles away towards Westbury where the BBC were filming and towards the same direction this craft was going so I am um, sort of left to more or less pursue what I'd seen and ended up going up on top of the white horse and approaching sort of the area where the BBC were and it was then that I made sort of acquaintances with a lot of people from sort of the crop circle background Colin Andrews, Pat Delgado 
and um, some of my good friends today. And it sort of happened that the next day down in the field, sort of about half a mile away to their left, was this large circle with three circles around it in very similar fashion to the look of the craft and the side of this craft. And then the night that the actual circle appeared, but um, the BBC cameras didn't catch it appearing, it was a very sort of strange night because we all seemed to be knocked out. We all seemed to want to just all go to sleep at that point of the night. We all just felt compelled to sleep and awoke the next morning to find the circle there. And I just find it very strange because we all kind of questioned each other the next day. You know, when did we go to sleep? And it's almost like we couldn't all remember when we went to sleep. And usually, you know, at least one person would have a recollection of, you know, oh yeah, we decided to go to sleep at this yeah. time or well, something like that, yeah. but that never happened. Yeah. So, um, so it all came about when me and another sort of crop circle enthusiast who we were looking out there at the crop circles appearing at the time decided upon making an effort to make a circle firstly to see the difference between what we were seeing out there in the fields what we thought was to be genuine and what a human could do and what sort of damage it would cause to the crop compared to some of the ones we'd seen and also um, for other reasons to do with sort of supernatural events, whether there was any sort of form of contact with anything that was there, or whether any energy would, you know, sort of assimilate around us as we were doing the circle. So we wanted really as test purposes to go out and see for our own personal reasons whether that would make it. And so we sort of set about looking at sort of designs, what sort of design to make. It was um, less complicated in our mind. We didn't want to go too complex or make too big a circle because we were purely just on the basis of research, seeing the difference between the two. The first circles was um, a grass sort of circle over near Warminster. And it was partly just to provoke interest through the military because it was right next to a military base and to just watch over it for a while and see whether they were taking an interest. Because to us, if they took an interest, then there must be something going on within the military group that was taking it seriously. There seemed to be quite a buzz around it especially as it was just in plain sort of long grass, which was sort of what they would feed the cattle on really. And they would just come and mow it down. So, you know, on that account, you wouldn't expect there to be much of a fuss as in towards damage because, you know, it could easily all still be collected and used for that same purpose. And so we did see sort of military coming down and taking a look, taking a few photographs. So that was quite interesting in that respect. And then we um, moved on to um, sort of a rape seed oil field, knowing that the crop was very brittle. And that one was more on the purpose of seeing whether any energies would sort of accumulate around the circle we made or around us as we were making it or whether any other abnormal events would happen. And then another time where we made a couple additions to sort of an outstanding circle that was there already. And that was sort of on sort of an experiment to see, you know, whether there was any form of contact by adding something to an existing design that could have been sort of made by some other force other than human. We um took people from the sort of circle groups and like gave them an anonymous tip off just so that none of them would be caught out by the circle that we'd made because we weren't out there to try and stitch people up 
It was a purely for our own research purposes. We found on that one that um, rapeseed oil is very brittle and with rapeseed oil you more or less would always snap it as soon as you started pressing it down to the ground and we also remember removing some of the really damaged crop and taking them with us and disposing of it. Um, only to find later when we saw photographs of that very circle that a lot of the rapeseed oil was actually perfectly bent and wasn't snapped like it was when we saw it when we made it. Mm. Which was very sort of intriguing to us. Yeah, it's almost like something had come and tidied up behind us. You know, and it was sort of on that very occasion that that one happened. But um, people in the local village reported seeing lights and sort of strange sort of glow on the hills, which was opposite near the field where we were. So it was quite interesting to hear back through just local talk that that happened on the same night. We were looking at the circle, photographing it and using the pole to sort of take some aerial view shots of it. And myself and my friend just felt compelled to add just two additions to that existing circle. And they weren't large portions or anything. It's maybe only sort of two foot square of crop that was actually pushed down in the process of that but from, felt compelled to add it to this one particular circle on the actual overall design that was already there. And with that, my friend said, give us a sign. You know, he said, if there's something out there and it is intelligent, then give us a sign. And we left the field and never thought much of it and went back to sit in the car. And I was just looking through some sort of local books of the area we were in and looking that we were sort of more or less on one of the lines, the lay lines in the area where we parked. And with that my friend sort of heard a sound which I f tried putting down to being me with my foot on the clutch pedal. And he said that he didn't think it was that. And so I just kept on reading the book. And um, then I heard the same sound again with my friend and with that the car violently shook from side to side which to me and my friend was like at the time rather scary because there's nothing that could have forced the car to shake so violently I mean if people were there you would have seen them doing it and so I decided to sort of start the car in rather sort of a hurried fashion and get out of there and as we sort of flew down the lane to get away, saw some lights sort of disappear behind the clouds up in the sky and saw an owl on the fence fly off in a very sort of scared fashion. I remembered reading sort of a lot sort of further on, a few years more down the line, reading one of Whitley Stryber's books. Um, and he explained how through different things in people's lives, trauma, stuff we do as a human condition, try to mask these things that happen that hurt us with other images or other circumstances to hide any hurt or you know any fear factor there. And Whitley Stryber's um, dealings with different people from abduction and other things led him to believe that what with the pictures people have drawn of what they claim to be aliens, having large almond sort of shaped eyes, um, a lot of the time they would relate to seeing something like an owl or some creature which did have those sort of eyes, which they could deal with. In their sort of mind, they could deal with that and be happy with that, rather than sort of what they may have seen. It's almost like a false sort of memory sort of that we have in our mind just to protect ourselves from that fear. Because no one could think of what we were thinking that night. And because it was quiet where we were, we discussed what we were thinking of and how we wanted to summon a circle to be made in the field 
and expected it to be made in the field that we were in. And my friend said, well, let's think of something that maybe is similar to the Star of David or, you know, has six points to it, something like that. And the same thing happened after we'd left doing the meditation, went back to the woods. We all remember, more or less, just falling asleep again, just being sort of knocked out, you know, and couldn't remember when any of us actually did fall asleep. No, it was, it was, all we kind of remembered was kind of a flash in our faces sort of thing and just waking up the next morning. The next day a um, friend of ours, Traveller, came up and told us about the circle that had appeared. It just so happened to be a six-petaled flower and we went down to examine it. And we found that it wasn't the circle in the middle of the six petals, it was actually, if you lifted the crop gently, six-sided in the centre, so it was actually, you know, a hexagon. And they had two trademark D and D next to it, where um, Doug and Dave claimed that they made it. But to this day, even though they said they made it, we believe they put their hallmark on it after discovering it themselves. So to this day we believe, you know, that was a genuine circle that appeared. And Doug and Dave, who had claimed to make some of them just down the road anyway, may have been on their way back from making one, saw this circle and come and added their D&D &D to it. Because we did find the D&D &D part to be all broken, all the crop was snapped but looking at the petal, and each petal individually, the crop was actually perfectly bent. And we wondered how they could honestly know what we were asking for. So we had a chance in Andrew Collins but to explain that. It doesn't really bother me what other people believe in crop circles because it comes down to, I think, individuality and what you believe at the end of the day. But. It sort of bothers me that people do think it's all just fake, you know, and people are doing that. Because if you trace circles back as far as they went, you would think, why would people want to make them back then? There was no hoo-ha or media hysteria around the subject, nothing. And like the Moan Devil picture in the book, you know, why would it date back so far? back when in times like that people would have no reason to go out and start making crop circles. So it bothers me in that sense, it bothers me also because I feel there is a genuine phenomenon out there. But also I do like the fact that these people who do make circles make some very fine art. And I think as an art form these people do it very well. And um, why not have something beautiful like that on the landscape? You know, it kind of cheers people up. Just on one experience with friends, where we went past one field one night near Beckhampton, but um, one minute the field was empty. Within five minutes of saying we were going the wrong way and turning around and coming back past the same field, there was a design of three circles joined by lines between. Within five minutes, and these were large circles as well. And then to find later, sort of, you know, that after visiting them with the friends who were with me, and one friend had gone off, he just got in a funny mood that night, and so he decided to leave, and he said he was going to hitch back. And then finding out that the three of us who went into that circle ended up with sickness and diarrhoea for a couple of days, and the friend who'd left to go back never had sickness and diarrhoea which I found very strange. You know, it couldn't be put down to any other cause, but us going into that same circle together so early, just after it had formed. Yeah, because um, it happened sort of, I went back the next day, um, left my friend's house feeling very tired, even though we'd had sleep. And my friend's mother didn't want me to drive home to where I lived a few villages away. She said I was welcome to stay over because I didn't look too well. I, I just wanted to make the journey home. So I went home and I went to bed early. And it was only sort of 
you know, the next day. But I sort of felt a bit more energised again. And sort of upon getting up and having a shower and freshening up for the morning, I found a triangular mark on my arm which I couldn't explain and which, you know, took a photo of and luckily for me I did because it disappeared not more than 10 minutes later and also just to find that my watch had lost about half an hour of time at the same time as well which to me just seemed very strange especially from feeling so sort of low to suddenly feeling sort of so awake and so alive again. So sort of UBI spawned from my mind. I just woke up one day and it was just like it was in my head, UBI. And it very much meant um, United Believers of Intelligence. From sort of UFO sightings and stuff, it really came about that I had an open mind and my mind had opened up enough and I'd seen things that no longer could I just put down to being classic ice crystals in the sky reflecting light and things like that. So UBI spawned from that, but um, UBI, UBI wasn't really about just two individuals, it was about people coming together and sharing the experience and look at different sort of sides of it, not just the crop circles, but spirituality, sort of ghosts, a lot of sort of beliefs that people have in sort of the spiritual world and in the world of the paranormal. And it came from there really. I would say yes, it angers me that some people make money from the subject in crop circles itself. Um, because there was a lot of people at the time out there and if it wasn't money, it was kind of fame we were trying to grab their slice of something which was like deemed quite magical at the time and I felt everyone just wanted to be recognised as someone, some sort of authority whereas we went around not sort of trying to be recognised but trying to look at the whole thing openly and generally and we could see these other people just sort of jumping on the bandwagon and trying to make a name for themselves. And of course, making money from sort of crop circle conferences, etc. You know, I just felt it was disgusting that we went to one crop circle conference down in Glastonbury. And we had a lot of information and a lot to give to people there to talk about openly in sort of debate. And it was purely on the basis that we didn't have the money, but we couldn't really go in to do that. And I felt sort of a bit disgusted that that's what it had come down to, was money and such sort of extortionate prices just to go into a debate. And um, it just so happened that we'd met a couple of nice people out there, sort of looking at the circles, and they felt that we had something better to give into the debate about the actual subject and money to them was no object, they did have a lot of money but they said what was more important was the actual subject itself and they turned around and paid for myself and another member of the UBI to go in and you know get our point of view across so I was quite happy to do that but I just found that it was very sort of based around tourism and, and just trying to make a bit of money along the way and my approach has always been but this is something that I sort of felt was important and had more substance than just people making them as well and I didn't think it was right that people should be able to jump on the bandwagon so easy um, I wouldn't say that some circle making was trying to pull the wool over people's eyes but I have seen people who've tried to do that purely sort of on the basis of TV and the way that sometimes they wanted to make a mockery of the subject 
because you've got a subject that was at the time becoming very powerful and very in the public mind and very open and you could see in some ways the authorities trying to push that back because it's a very powerful thing having too many people with open minds out there because the state we live in in the world where they do like to have control even though we like to think we control our lives they do have control over us and I think something as powerful and quite moving and supernatural and unexplained was sort of jumped on by certain agencies to try and sort of calm public attention by using some crop circle makers and trying to use the people that thought it was genuine and trying to stitch people up at the same time. So. I'd say some of them did it for that reason, but also they probably were paid for that. But generally, I wouldn't say that everyone was out there just to pull the wool over everyone's eyes. I do know of one group that did have a weird experience. They were going out just to do it purely for those reasons, with the actual circle making. Those teams were actually going out to sort of go about it in the wrong way. And their experience, I remember, was quite frightening for one person because as he was going round the crop and flattening it, he felt, like I said, that something was watching him and it took quite a bit to get this out of this person, but he felt that something was watching him. And as he started going round and getting a little bit more nervous, and this was people that wouldn't usually be nervous, they'd gone and made circles before, so, you know, they had no reason to be frightened in the field. They weren't doing it all on their own. There was a group of them. Now, I went out and made some circles, quite simple affairs in the first instances, and the researchers deemed these circles to be genuinely paranormal. And what was interesting to me is that some people experienced weird paranormal effects in the circle that I'd created. Now, if you're asking me, you know, why I created circles, um, I suppose initially to test the researchers, but because of my finding that people were having paranormal experiences in the circles we had created, it obviously opened up a completely new avenue of why I would want to make circles. Why I think the, the lines actually get blurred and maybe these researchers could have quite reasonably believed my circle to be paranormal is because many witnesses, um, many, many people who, who actually went into the formations actually experienced paranormal events and these were not just researchers. So my testing to find out whether researchers could tell the difference actually produced a whole different response than I expected. And of course, when you realize that you can create something and people are going to have that sort of a response in, in the circles, I think it, it opens up uh, a question in your mind as to how far you can go and just how far the experiences that people have will go in these, in these circles. So I wanted to push the bounds of what I was creating and also to see the reactions of people that went in afterwards to find out what they thought of these circles too. What you have to get over is the understanding that, you know, first, humans are making the circles. Secondly, you have to understand that circles are having an effect and that people are experiencing strange things. And then the concept of whether or not this is hoaxing or whether people are trying to be fooled, I think goes out of the window. Um, once you realize that crop circles are real, no matter whether I make them or a UFO makes them or maybe an alien makes them, you know, they all attract paranormal phenomena. And it doesn't matter who's making the crop circle. It's a very large magical symbol, like a talisman. It has a power and an energy which goes beyond uh, beyond just the simple form and shape. Um, I don't like the word hoaxing. Hoaxing implies an intent to fool, um, to, to sort of ridicule, 
and that's not what crop circles are about. Uh, I don't go out on a daily basis, you know, to make crop circles that are going to fool people. I go out to make crop circles that are going to give people experiences and make them, uh, make them happier in their lives, make them understand themselves, make them look inwards. Well, it's about a spiritual endeavor. This is why people keep coming back, because there's something good, something beneficial which brings the circle makers back time after time because they're having their own experiences and they're helping other people have experiences. Um, I think if this was a joke, uh, you, you would have seen the circle makers give up years ago. Um, there must be something which obviously draws people back to keep on making these circles. And this is, I think, the fundamental question is, why do people make circles? I'm not totally angry because people make money from crop circles. Um, obviously there is a need for information to be passed out into the community about what crop circles are, about their location, um, photographs, videos, these sorts of things, um, people's personal experiences, um, people's research into the paranormal, all of these things need to be explored. Um, you can't do that without uh, money from somewhere. So. The, uh, the making of money from crop circles isn't so much of a problem. What I do have a problem with are the researchers that I believe are not doing, um, doing their utmost to find out what's going on, or maybe have their own personal bias in saying that these things can't be created by humans when they haven't even spoken to the humans that are creating them, which I think is a bit of a, um, a, bit of a failing on some researchers' part. Um, what I don't like is the uh, cloak and dagger that seems to go on in uh, the, the, the crop circle community whereby you know, we are portrayed as uh, the bad guys that cannot be approached and uh, then statements are made about how we can't be making these crop circles. You know, that, that to me, making money from that type of argument is, uh, is rather sad, I think. You know, this isn't really about me, uh, this is about everyone who's involved in crop circles, right from the researchers to the, uh, the public who hear about crop circles through newspapers or television programs or because they travel along the roads where the crop circles appear and they decide to go in and have a look. It's about everyone who's involved all over the world who has an interest. What I'm trying to do is just be as honest as I can about um, my position in crop circles and my arrest, which was unfortunate, did have the effect of thrusting me into the media limelight as being a circle maker. But I can only stress that it was not my own intent to be arrested for making crop circles. Uh, that was the doing of um, crop circle researchers, unfortunately, who, uh, who didn't like the fact that I was out um, trying to show them that uh, humans can make circles. I'm, I and the rest of my team have gone out, um, made a circle in a field and found out that another team was making another circle in the same field on the same night. And there was a specific design element in our crop circle which actually had something to do with the other crop circle. It was actually something in ours was pointing towards something in the other circle. And I think this was... Um, a very good coincidence that two sets of teams would be out on the same night in the same location and would be doing similar designs which have a connection between each other. And um, is this just coincidence? Or are the circle makers getting the urge to go to a particular field on a particular night and do a particular design? And this is the type of thing I find fascinating, you know, when you're making circles, is you have these, these coincidences, much of which you cannot speak about um, openly because you reveal the details of the circle to, um, to people who, who sort of might, might not be uh, ready to take that sort of information. You know, it, it has to be held secretly um, so that people can benefit most from the circle. Um, another coincidence that uh, took place, I did a circle design and we went out and made this circle and on uh, within a similar time frame within a couple of days somebody else in a different part of the country actually North Yorkshire in fact uh, created a circle and 
this circle was very similar to my design. Now, I say that the chances of the, uh, the designs being so similar uh, are astronomical. So what we've got here is a, is a circumstance where maybe two sets of circle makers were picking up on the same design. Now, where do we get the inspiration from? This is the big question. You know, am I simply drawing these things out of my own head, um, simply you know using my my own sort of artistic ability, or am I getting some of the idea of of a particular circle from somewhere else? Am I being given this idea, pushed in the, in a particular direction? And when you see somebody in a different part of the country do a similar design like that, it makes you makes you wonder. And um, obviously, I'm not in touch with the the, the circle making team. Uh, that, that did that, you know, it was a surprise to me. So what is the connection? I mean, if um, the parallel I try to draw in this particular instance is, is that if, if I'd been able to predict with such accuracy uh, the design that somebody had done or to replicate the same design somewhere else, then the chances are I could win the lottery by the same technique. And um, it's those sorts of odds that uh, make you think that um, we're not dealing with coincidence, that there is something much bigger going on. It is, quite, it is quite hard to sum up the many years of experiences I've had making crop circles, but I must say that coincidences and synchronicities are definitely part of the paranormal world behind crop circles. Now, you may get somebody who will predict your circle you know, maybe a clairvoyant or uh, somebody of that nature will say that they've had a, an idea that a circle is going to appear. Um, you may get somebody uh, come to the area and they've got a particular design which they've kept secret, you know, to themselves. And they've been asking for this design and then that design will appear. These are all the sorts of coincidences that um, I think, you know, on a personal level, people uh, see great significance in and uh, crop circles have a lot of elements which uh, jar memories in people and jar ideas they act as keys so um, people will look at a crop circle and what should by rights just be a simple design starts to become something which unlocks um, unlocks meaning for the person who is uh, entering the circle I've seen black figures in, in the crop circles, uh, shadowy sort of figures that um, at, at night you mistake for other team members um, because in the distance you know you can see some sort of black figure moving around and you assume it's a team member and I have actually walked up and seen these figures just disappear in front of me and uh, friends of mine have, uh, have had this, this also. Um, not entirely disconcerting either. Um, some people say that uh, the, the, the idea behind seeing a black figure should, should be frightening. Um, well, it wasn't to me. It was actually quite exhilarating. I believe in ghosts, and I think that maybe whatever I saw might have been some sort of spirit form, and uh, as I didn't feel any negative uh, presence from uh, the, uh, the black figure, then uh, I'm not going to make the judgment that it must have been something bad. Um, I'm going to just sort of remain open-minded as to what that was. Um, other occasions when we've been making circles, I've seen balls of light, and uh, these balls of light on one occasion entered a field and, ch and chased us out, uh, stopped us making a circle. And um, I now believe that we weren't supposed to make that circle in that field on that night. And that's what these balls of light that entered the field um, were there to do, was to try and sort of alert us and frighten us off. Um, in that case, yes, I felt frightened. And uh, the emotion told me, you know, leave, and, and we did. So that, um, that, that was one other event. There was a particular night when uh, I, I felt a very strong, overwhelming urge to create a circle, um, and my colleagues were we were very charged about the making of this circle 
but um, we, we knew that uh, researchers were actually camped out in the field where we were going to be making the circle. But something told us that it was kind of just go ahead and do it, go ahead and make the circle. You know, you can, you can get away with this, this is, this is okay, do it. And um, we, we just did, we went and made this circle and uh, surprisingly we were not um, interrupted by the uh, researchers who were nearby. And uh, I was fascinated by how this could be, you know, how these researchers hadn't seen us or hadn't heard us and how we'd got away with it. But I, I was running on this sort of energy thing of uh, this is meant to be, you know, go and do this. Uh, but I sought out the uh, researchers and uh, asked them, you know, what they had found in the morning when, when obviously that uh, field was discovered to have a crop circle in. These uh, researchers told me that a fog bank had descended over the area of the field where we were working and that this fog bank had obscured their view in to where we were doing the crop circle and in the morning uh, the fog lifted and suddenly the crop circle was in view and the researchers went in and this was very interesting to me because of the feelings that we'd had that we must go ahead and make this circle that this was very important that there was a a reason behind it and and go ahead but from the other perspective you know that we may have had some form of protection in in a, a fog bank and uh, maybe the the sound being shrouded um, so that we could create the crop circle and the other researchers hadn't seen us this was fascinating to me that um, there may be an element of uh, protection going on um, we have had clouds part above us when it's been raining and um, we thought we were going to get uh, quite muddy and uh, we thought we were going to get mud on the crop and we went into a field and although it was raining it seemed like a cl uh, an opening in the cloud, like an oval shaped opening in the cloud um, stayed above us for most of the circle and this stopped the rain. The rain didn't come down on us in the part of the circle, um, in, the, in the part of the field where we were creating the circle. And how that can be is fascinating. Um, the, these things just boggle the mind. You have to be there to see them, but they are absolutely fascinating, amazing. They draw you in. And this is what keeps circle makers coming back. It's because of these paranormal experiences. Um, flashes of light. Um, we've seen flashes of light which um, don't seem to have any particular source. Um, we've seen flashes of light uh, coming from clouds without any thunder noise. And, and on one occasion, uh, these flashes of light which were coming from behind the cloud were quite bright. And uh, my camcorder, which could normally film uh, stars and clouds at night, um, when pointed at these clouds, which should then have been, you know, sort of flashing, uh, quite visibly on the camera you can see the stars but you can't see any flashing and you can hear my commentary on the tape saying you know oh look look at the flashes and nothing was captured on tape so you know you've got things like this which are observed when making circles um, we usually say a narration this has come from years of making circles now um, and believing that we're taking part in something you know more than just coincidence that we are actually picking up on messages and going out and making circles. So because of this we've incorporated a, um, a framework, a, like a spiritual framework to making the circles which in, involves us uh, saying an invocation um, and this invocation is kind of, uh, it's asking for the spirits to come to the circle um, to give it energy to protect us whilst we make the circle and also for the spirits to guide us to give us the idea of what what they want put into the circle and also that the circle be for good that people have positive experiences from it and sometimes we ask as well if we can have our own paranormal experiences and uh, upon asking this on a on a couple of occasions when i've said and please you know give us a paranormal experience um, a shooting star would go overhead upon my saying, uh, you know, that we want a paranormal experience. And to me, this is a, a very subtle but very personal way for me um, of, of just being, you know, yes, you're doing the right thing. Yes, you know, go ahead, make the circle. 
you know, this is this is okay, and it it's just a warming a warming thing that you get back. Um, and this is this is it. You see, I mean, to me, crop circles is not not something that should be studied on paper necessarily. It's something that you should get into. It's something that you know you can take part in creating. It's something that um, you can you can get a feedback directly from. I personally think that the magic of the crop circles works best when people don't know their origin. So if a crop circle remains unknown, i.e. I don't tell anyone that I made it, then that crop circle is going to have more energy. People are going to think that it must be something paranormal. And I think by thinking the crop circle is paranormal, it becomes paranormal. I think that like prayer energy, that if you pray for something or if you meditate hard on a particular thing that you want, you actually draw that thing closer to reality. You actually will it closer into existence. When I first started about 1995, uh, we'd seen a bit on the news and other people claiming to have made circles and such, and basically thought, let's give this a go, see if it's possible. Not knowing a great deal about it at the time, and uh, just went into it from there, really. And obviously, as years went on, we got more involved and got to understand different things and so on, really. Uh, personally, I never, at the time, I was never a believer. I just thought it was something that went on. Mm. And it was a bit naive at the time, really, back then, wasn't it? Mm. Yeah. I was uh, I was always a bit of a believer in sort of UFOs and crop circles, etc. But I sort of had an inkling that it was, you know, there might be people behind it, and I wanted to go out and find out exactly what people could do, and that's what we did. We were very surprised the first time we did it. Yeah, it's unbelievably easy compared to what it looks like. Um, our early circles, I don't think any researchers actually found them because they were quite late in the season and they did look very amateurish but compared to what we thought it would take you know it was well this is easy next year we can go out and we can do this properly it wasn't really till I think it was the third season which would be 97 that people actually started to notice them I think uh, our area was a bit uh, dead if you like nobody really used it it mainly all went on in Wiltshire and the obvious places and I think it took people a couple of years to realise that what was actually going on in the area yeah, and the, the whole time we were really quite naive of the whole scene. We had no idea, we were just sort of out there. Uh, basically, we go to that trouble originally for our own benefit. I, I have to admit, originally it was, it was probably for fun. And then it became interesting to see the sort of conclusions that other people would draw and what they would make out of it. And we just carried on doing it and got more into it really because people were coming up with different ideas and there's a whole vast range of people with certain conclusions and so on and we just carried on with it really drawing a, a pattern out on paper is one thing you can make it look nice and uh, it looks quite clever but seeing it stamped into a field a few hundred feet across is another thing entirely that's the reason I do it it's just it's my art I'm a complete sceptic now I'd love to see the paranormal things that other people have reported, but I haven't yet. And, uh, yeah, it's just the art. It, it is art. It's the foremost thing is the art, and I like to experiment with that in the hopes that I'm actually going to see something else, something different. Uh, I haven't had any paranormal experiences, but obviously I keep an open mind, and I basically like to see what happens. Um, the only thing I suppose you could ever really count is that this is a particular field. Obviously, I won't say where. And every year we go in there, and something will happen. We get freaked out, or basically, I think it's basically us getting freaked out every year. But it's always the same field, and we're doing this for a long time, and it never happens anywhere else. So, hopefully, we might see some developments along that line. There must be a reason why. I don't think it's a joke at all. I just, you know, I do it for me and for other people who might want to see it and somebody running around thinking it's little green men doing it is, you know, I haven't put that idea into their heads. I can't talk them out of it, so just leave them to it. Let them think that. You know, I can't be responsible for what they choose to believe. I find it very interesting to 
see what other people think. I don't intentionally set out to deceive anybody. They just make their own ideas up and I'm just interested to see what they can come up with, really. Whilst at the same time, not deliberately saying this is a hoax, this is real. It's up to them. They can believe what they will, really. Uh, trying at the moment with a site of mine called Total Human Solution to uh, get out there sort of just a few demonstrations of what can be done I mean a lot of people believe that the whole art of circle making is the mystery so I don't want to sort of blow the whole thing wide open and demonstrate everything that can be done all in one circle but I do want to get a few points out there like you know somebody says well this can't be done because XYZ we say well there you go there's proof it can be done and they've still got the chance to sort of fit everything together for themselves seems to be a lot of people out there who uh, possibly narrow minded uh, they won't some people are very uh, some people don't accept their own views and they refuse to look at the evidence from any other point of view and it's a very handy thing for people to think oh hang on they've proved this so this must be the case and then they've got both sides of the evidence and they won't just channel into their own ideas and not look around basically there's an account of an old lady who was healed in a crop circle and that was a crop circle that we did but we can't prove it and nobody believes it and it's sort of they're using the old lady's healing as part of their research into crop circles but I know that I made that circle I know that you know it is man made there's not a phenomenon behind it and that they're wrong on that point and I want to be able to show that uh, if the situation comes up again I need to be able to prove it and say look you're not listening to me so here you go here's proof and now you have to listen with with the website we create the diagrams of the circles before they're done sort of a few months in advance we uh, encrypt them with a public key encryption system and people can download the encrypted files uh, they can keep them on their own computer and out of my way there's no way I can tamper with them whatsoever then the circles made all the judgments about the circle are made and then at any time you know at the appropriate time we can release the passwords to the files the files can be opened and the diagrams that have been created before the circle and kept safe and out of tampering's way can be seen and it's just you know proof positive it's a diagram produced before the event hopefully I've sent quite a few emails out at the launch to every researcher I could think of and it's interesting but only about 15 are actually on the mailing list now one in particular I've sent three emails to because it was Michael Glickman who was uh, on a radio program a year ago saying that he wanted to cooperate and he wanted uh, circle makers to come forward and you know prove what they can do so I sent him an email mentioning that and he's ignored it completely he's ignored three sort of stating the whole thing and the last one quoted him from the radio show saying he wanted to work with people and still no response at all I believe the website is a very positive thing. It gives the researchers and the public a chance to realise that human beings can go out and make complicated formations, whereas in the paper it will glorify it to some extent and basically not really go into detail of it. So this will give pub the public and the researchers something to actually go on. The particular formation that we had done and the gist of what the researchers were saying that it was a lot to do with uh, ley lines and the direction in which this formation pointed. It pointed to a very significant uh, monument, basically, and a whole tale gradually evolved as to why it faced this way, why it looked like it did, when, in actual fact, all we'd done is gone in there and said, what should this one look like? Oh, let's do a bit here, let's do a bit there, and basically a long tail came out of that as to why it was there. It's not exactly a military operation. I mean, we'd quickly sketch one. I mean, I would say that... Well, we've got two modes of working, really, haven't we? We either yeah, plan it yeah, it's mentioned down that. to the last mentioned detail, that. or we just think, 
let's get out there and do it. Sometimes one. it's off the cuff. Yeah. We just quickly scribble one down in the pub and shoot off in the car and off we go. There's other times we could be planning it for a week beforehand, depending on where it's going to be, I suppose. I think the forthcoming science movie is going to throw a lot of myths into the air. There's going to be a lot of people out there using the internet to try and find out a bit more. And hopefully they're going to get to my site and they will see, you know, a bit of solid proof for them to use, you know, to make their own minds up. THS site will prove specific circles are man-made and those circles hopefully can be compared to the unknown ones and people should see that there's no difference. You know, we're not out to prove every single circle. We're just out to prove that it's possible and people should see that it's a lot more plausible than aliens. Well, we do do circles for a very serious reason. I'd say there's certainly a lot of uh, interest, certainly a lot of fun to be had from it. It's a bit strange, but it's certainly very interesting to go out at 2 o'clock in the morning and you've got to hide the car and you've got to sneak around and at the end of it you've actually got something to show for it. Um, I think I should start by saying that I started making circles uh, primarily as an experiment to find out what is um, what's humanly possible. Um, you know what can be done in a field within four hours with three other people. Um, and I think quite quickly it becomes um, compulsive, um, and you you see people's reactions to what you do and. They're very unexpected reactions. You know, people claim to be healed in our formations. Um, people claim to have spiritual experiences in our formations. Um, I think, yeah, I think, um, I think, hoaxes, or should we call them circle makers, are very misunderstood. People say that it couldn't possibly be made by people because they wouldn't bother to go to that extent to do something that extreme or that complex, and that's like. That's completely the wrong way around. Of course we do. We go to the, the kind of the nth degree to the most extreme amounts. I mean, the kind of formations that you're seeing appearing now in the fields are way out on the kind of far end of what's humanly possible. Um, you know, the triple arm spiral that appeared in 1996 at Windmill Hill was, I think, if you measure the diameter along the curve, is a thousand foot across. And and when you have those kind of formations appearing in fields just within one night. Um, people think that can't be made by people, but they can be made by people. I mean, basically, they are made by people. Um, and part of the reason why you go to so much trouble is to kind of take it to something which is seemingly beyond human endeavour. So people go out to the fields, or they see it in the press, and they say, my God, this is amazing, it could not be done by people. But the motivations of the circle makers are to actually push it as far as possible so people think that it can't be made by people. But of course they're made by people. <laughs> What's the point? Um, I guess uh, for us, for our team, for me personally, um, you know, we're artists uh, and, and the circles we make are our artwork. Um, that's the point. What's the point of art? We, we'd never played a joke on anybody, we'd never rug pulled anybody. Um, uh, our team, um, the, the kind of agenda that we have is not to um, make a formation, have someone rush in and go, all this down as well, it's genuine. Um, and then for us to come out and say, oh no, here's all the evidence, we took some photographs and uh, here's some time lapse of us making it. We've never done that, I mean that was kind of um, an agenda for circle makers who kind of, kind of predated us. We just have a very separate agenda, which is to, as far as possible, um, disassociate ourselves from the specific formations. We've never actually specifically claimed a formation, and we never will, because the whole point and the whole power of our work is gained from the fact that they are all for this. As soon as you claim a formation, you kill it. You know, we've never personally made any money out of the formations, but, um, you know, for us it's... it's you know, it's, it's a hobby. It's not. It's 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 not our profession. Someone like Colin Andrews, you know, he makes his living off of it, and and good luck to him. He's very good at what he does, um, and in what he does, he supports what we do. He's basically acts as an agent for our work, 
So fine, you know, he's getting payment for that, for that job. I think we create publicity for our formations. I don't think we personally create publicity. Um, sure, we all have egos. And sure, it's quite nice to sit in front of a camera. Um, but no, I create publicity for my formations, not for me personally. Um, for us, though, it's kind of important, I think, to actually, uh, because we're artists, to talk about that agenda and to try and kind of push forward the debate about crop circles and bring that kind of area into it. And to a certain extent, we kind of we have to do we have to go in front of cameras and talk about what we're doing and why we're doing it. Um, I, cer I certainly don't crave publicity. No, I was basically um, when I started circle making, my intention was always to remain completely anonymous. But to a certain extent, I was outed by George Wingfield. Um, and once that happened, uh, you can't really put the rabbit back in the hat. Uh, and so we decided just to, you know, to kind of go with it and use it to advantage, basically. We can talk as circle makers, but we don't have to claim specific formations, so we don't take any power away from the phenomenon. And maybe we can just kind of like throw out some interesting arguments and, and, and push, you know, just push it forward. Sure, we, we all have a little snicker now and then. Um, no, I enjoy reading... Um, I enjoy reading people talking about the formations, like when broadsheet journalists go into formations like I did this year, uh, for instance, the uh, cock fractal, the one at Silbury Hill and the one at Milk Hill, the second cock fractal. Um, and when they go in there and they say these things could not be made by people, um, you know, we get a kick out of that. Um, so if the kind of residual belief in the circles um, kind of drops away, then the phenomenon dies and uh, we all lose, both sides lose. Uh, like I said before, that it's, sim it's a symbiotic relationship. Um, you know, we need them and, and they need us. And uh, although, bizarrely, never the twain shall meet, we need each other. Um, and the, the truth is out there. I mean, you know, we're sitting here and I'm talk, talking quite candidly about what I do, but you'll believe what you believe. you believe if you want to say that I work for the government, you'll believe that. If you believe I'm an artist, you'll believe that. Whatever. I don't have a problem with each of their own. I mean, sure, we worry about it, um, but we're extremely careful. Um, it's not to say that it won't happen, and I'm sure one day it will happen. It has happened before. Outside of this country, it happened in Hungary. Uh, I think some skeptics were actually caught making a formation. Um, and I think they were taken to court as well. Um, and I think they ended up paying the equivalent of £28 for uh, damage to the crop, but it wasn't a particularly spectacular formation. Um, but yeah, we worry about being caught. We're very careful, and uh, if we get caught, it's a fair cop. It's interesting actually, over the past couple of years, there's been a kind of a bit of a sea change. Um, well, I'll go back before. Yes, we, we have had trouble. We've had um, hang-up phone calls. We've had uh, threatening mail. Uh, there have been attacks on physically on some circle makers, not myself, uh, and on their property. Um, so yes, you know there is, a, you know there is a certain risk in doing what we do. I actually have. If you want me to show you some of the threatening letters that we've actually received, uh, absolutely yes, on several occasions. Um, I myself have had a series um, back in 1994. Um, there was three occasions towards the end of the season where I myself, the other circle makers, were seeing um, flashes of light, balls of light, kind of that were moving and crackling. Uh, more recently, this year, uh, we were out circle making in Wiltshire and saw an amazing kind of like burst of light and then a column of light. Um, Spectacular, no sound, completely silent. Um, we, I haven't really seen like a 50 foot craft with like grey aliens hanging outside of it, but um, but we've seen some pretty weird shit once we've been, while we've been out there in the fields. Yeah, on several occasions, uh, there's been times when we've drawn diagrams and the formations have appeared in the field before we got there to make it. Um, certain weird synchronicities and, and certain, I mean, themes appear every year in the actual formations. And I guess there's a certain amount of the teens feeding off of each other, but um, you know uh, I think there's been a certain like, there's been a lot of six odd geometry this year, 
and certainly a lot of the early formations that appeared, uh, we were not responsible for. And they all had six fold geometry and they had very similar geometries to the stuff that we, we'd been working on uh, over the winter. So um, yeah, there is a certain amount of, of, uh, of synchronicity, um, kind of cosmic coincidence.